Hi guys, let's go on to learn about rough driver development in this lesson. In our previous parts, we mentioned rough has indeed conducted some standardized definitions to many hardware interfaces and designed some APIs for these interfaces to facilitate driver developers' use of these interface APIs for some control of specific devices. And among all the hardware interfaces, the simplest one is the GPIO interface. So in this lesson, I'll introduce to you some basic knowledge about the GPIO interface and the use of some of its external APIs. The GPIO interface, General Purpose Input Output Interface, must be the simplest hardware structure. Its characteristics shown outside can be generalized into several types. Here I'll briefly introduce them. The first one is the ability of outputting electrical levels. The level can be a high level, maybe 5 volts or 3.3 volts, or a low level as its output. A low level usually means 0 volt. The second characteristic is that it can read externally fed electrical levels. For example, it can read an external level and decides it is a high or low level. The third characteristic is that it can respond to external interruptions. An interruption means a jump in an external electrical level. Such a jump may be, say, a jump from a high level to a low level, or a jump from a low level to a high level, or whatever a jump in an electrical level occurs. It enters an interruption. We can set all of them up in the API, like the type of external interruption it responds to. Devices adopting GPIO interfaces are quite common, such as an LED or a button module, or a relay module, or a buzzer module. There's so many devices using GPIO interfaces. Next, our rough also conducts some abstraction for GPIO capacities. There are two specific main capacities. One is the input capacity, namely input. The other is the output capacity, and the input capacity can be further divided into the following three sub-capacities. The first one is the capacity of reading an electrical level. The second is the capacity of responding to external interruptions. And the third is the capacity to set up pull-up resistors or pull-down resistors, or the state of floating. There's one major sub-capacity of the output capacity, namely externally output in an interface electrical level. With this GPIO capacity, it must correspond to its API. Here, let me briefly introduce to you APIs of GPIO. And these APIs are categorized according to capacities. To start with, a universal API is to acquire the input and output direction of interface. And to call this API does not require any capacity. The second is the capacity of reading electrical levels, i.e. the read API requires this interface to have the read capacity so that it can be called. The third is the setup of edges, such as the setup of the mode of interruption response. As we mentioned before, such a capacity, it requires the capacity of interrupt so that it can be called set edge or get edge APIs. Next are set pull and get pull. Also similarly, the interface must have the capacity of pull so that it can call these two APIs. Next are write, set, active low, and get active low. These three APIs. The precondition of calling these three APIs is the capacity of write. The first write is actually quite easy to understand. It is to set up whether the external output level is a high or low level. Active low actually means whether the reversion is needed when I output an electrical level. That's to say, when this active low is set up to be true, if I externally output a high level, the final output is a low level, since I set up a logic of its reversion here. The last one is the setup of direction. Well, which capacities should GPIO have in order to set up direction? Only when it has the capacities of writing and reading can the direction be set up. Otherwise, this direction is fixed. For example, this GPIO only has the capacity of reading or writing, and its direction is fixed, either input or output. Then it's about the application for GPIO interfaces. As mentioned earlier, there is a driver.json under the driver directory. It describes the hardware interface of entire device that I apply for being used in drivers. 
driver.json has three main fields, namely type. And this type describes the type of interface, for example, whether I can use an interface of GPIO or an I2C interface of inputs. Next one is features. It needs to describe the capacities that the GPIO I apply for should have. For example, my driver here is an LED light, and it only needs a writing capacity. So here, for features we need write, output write, such a field. The system will allocate to us a minimum resource that satisfies our needs. Say if the system has two resources, this GPIO can both read and write. Another GPIO can only write. Then the system may allocate to us the GPIO that can only write to us, since we only applied for such a function. That's to say, the system will allocate to us such a resource that minimally satisfies our needs. The third is args. It describes the default value of the interface instance at its initialization. The default value here, say, has a direction value, an output level, and active load. Alright, so that's all for this lesson. So please look forward to our upcoming classes on Ruff. Thank you very much. Ruff, make IoT easier.